Wings to Fly is a children's book about gaining confidence and working to succeed, told from the perspective of a young girl who loves to play basketball. She is often left out by her teammates until she meets her guardian angel who teaches her that success takes perseverance. Wings to Fly is a great read for all children. I would highly recommend this book. If you would like to make a purchase, please click on the link in my description box below. As a man, we represent the new Negro. This buck is not yet against the wall. We do not want this buck against the wall because that would be a peculiar and desperate position. We do not want him there. It is because of this that we are asking for fair compromise. When the Belgians have control of the Belgian Congo, which they cannot use, they have not the resources to develop nor the intelligence. The French have more territory than they can develop. There are certain parts of Africa in which they cannot live at all. So it is for you to come together and give us a United States of Africa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are not going to be a rest without our country. God never intended it, and we are not going to abuse God's confidence in us as men. We are men, human beings, capable of the same acts as any other race, possessing under fair circumstances the same intelligence as any other race. Now Africa has been sleeping, not dead, only sleeping. Today Africa is walking around not only on our feet, but on our brains. You can enslave as was done for 300 years the bodies of men. You can shackle the hands of men. You can shackle the feet of men. You can imprison the bodies of men, but you cannot shackle or imprison the minds of men. The Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, born on August 17, 1887, from a little town called St. Anne's Bay in Jamaica. He would one day become one of the greatest leaders that we've ever had. Marcus Garvey's father, Marcus Garvey Sr., was a very strict man, very strict, no-nonsense, stern type of father. He was huge on discipline and respect. And Marcus Garvey Sr. was a hero to little Marcus. Marcus Garvey Sr. worked at a cemetery, and one day, he took Marcus down to the graveyard. They went down to the cemetery and they started digging holes. They dug a hole deep enough for both of them to get inside. As they went inside, Marcus Garvey Sr. exited the hole and he pulled up the ladder, leaving Marcus down there by himself. He did it to teach him a lesson. And these were the type of tests that he would put his kids through. Inside of the Garvey's household, everyone had to address him as Mr. Garvey. Marcus Garvey Sr. instilled a lot of grittiness, toughness, and leadership into Marcus Garvey. Many of Garvey's father's characteristics helped him become the man that he was, the same man that led hundreds of thousands of black folks. As a kid, Marcus used to read a lot, and he used to challenge his friends to pick a word out of the dictionary so he can give them the definition. He was thorough like that. And in 1914, Garvey read Booker T. Washington's biography, Up From Slavery, and it changed his life forever. Garvey felt like it was his mission to unify black people. Garvey kicked off the UNIA and he decided to take his talents to Harlem. See, he couldn't get much popping in Jamaica, but Harlem was thriving. A. Philip Randolph, who was another black leader, got word on what Garvey was trying to get accomplished with the UNIA, and he set up his first lecture in the United States. But Garvey wasn't quite ready yet, and his nerves got the best of him. Garvey got up there in front of the crowd, and he was shook. Garvey trembled with fear. He had a shaky voice, and even at one point, he fell off the stage. Garvey studied the style of a local preacher. He rebuilt his confidence, leveled up, got back on his square, and he bounced back, because that's what fighters do. 
we come back. Garvey soon went on a 38 state tour, spreading his message all over the place. In September of 1917, Garvey opened up the first American chapter of the UNIA. He had the publicity he wanted now, he got the courage, and he went at all the black leaders who he felt were weak and the ones who he didn't agree with, like W.E.B. Du Bois and his former friend, A. Philip Randolph. And he started building UNIA chapters all over New York, and then it spread it through the country. Garvey also designed the red, black, and green flag. Garvey said, show me a race without a flag, and I will show you people without any pride. The red is for the blood that unites us all. Black is for the people. And the green represents the land. The UNIA gave jobs to thousands of people in Harlem. But Garvey was very stubborn, very much an authoritative man, and he made poor decisions because he wouldn't take advice from other people. Garvey made a lot of bad business decisions, and the UNIA started struggling financially. A man named George Tyler, who put a lot of money into Garvey's hand, he was a former investor. One day, he came to see Garvey at one of the UNIA offices. George Tyler stepped in and started shooting. So as he's in there bussing, Amy Ashwood, who was only Garvey's girlfriend at the time before he married her, jumped in front of the shooter to protect Garvey and tackled him down a flight of stairs. Garvey was hit three times. The next day, Garvey still went to his lecture and spoke in Philadelphia, all bandaged up and everything. The UNIA was growing at an alarming rate, and the Back to Africa movement was huge. Garvey was big time. There were over 500 chapters of the UNIA. And now here comes J. Edgar Hoover. J. Edgar Hoover sent all types of agents to infiltrate the UNIA. Hoover's agents were in the audience at Carnegie Hall when Garvey bragged that the UNIA would soon be strong enough to exact its own form of justice. When those crackers lynch a Negro below the Mason-Dixon line, since it is not safe to lynch a white man in any part of America, we shall press the button and lynch him in Africa. The agent reported that Garvey's address was met with great applause and much excitement. Garvey felt like black folks needed their own ships. There was the white star line, the Irish had the green star line, so Garvey created the black star line not only just to help with transportation, but to also sell goods. The SS Yarmouth was the first ship purchased, and Garvey renamed the ship the Frederick Douglass. But see, now Garvey had to actually hire people to run the Black Star Line. A. Philip Randolph and W.E.B. Du Bois felt like Garvey was doing a lot of this just for clout. They felt like Garvey was bringing on way too much attention to black folks and way too much attention onto himself. A. Philip Randolph said that Marcus Garvey has succeeded in making Negroes the laughing stock of the world. In 1923, Garvey was arrested for mail fraud for selling stock of the Black Star Line. Garvey was out on bail, and he had a sit-down meeting with Edward Clark, who was the Grand Wizard of the KKK. This right here outraged all the black leaders. But see, they didn't understand. 
Garvey was about business. And Garvey felt like the Klan was the invisible government of the United States. Many black leaders were hoping for Garvey's deportation. Malcolm has sat down with the Klan. MLK has sat down with the Klan. As I've said before, you don't have to like somebody in order to do business with them. These major corporations, these businesses, you think they like us? Walmart don't like us. Gucci don't like us. Prada don't like us. It's about business. So Garvey had a lot of plans, but black leaders were outraged. W.E.B. Du Bois called Garvey an enemy, and Garvey fired back. Garvey called him a rabbit mulatto who needed a horse with him. A. Philip Randolph later received a package in the mail. Startled by the package, he called the police. Inside the package, it was a mutilated hand. A. Philip Randolph was spreading the word that it was a Garveyite that sent them that. So everything was starting to get nasty, real nasty. And whether we like it or not, our ancestors did make mistakes. This is why we have to learn from their mistakes. Garvey finally ended up being convicted of mail fraud and sentenced to the max of five years, but only to be deported back to Jamaica. Hundreds of people came out to see Garvey leave. They all wished him well. Garvey spoke to the crowd and everybody got emotional. Now, once Garvey arrived in Jamaica, it was the exact opposite. People cheered him on like a rock star was coming to town. As Garvey's helped the climb, a misinformed journalist added an article in the newspaper saying that Garvey had passed away. The word spread fast. Once Garvey finally got his hands on the article, as Garvey read it, he actually had a stroke and passed away the next day. R.I.P. to one of our legends, one of our greats, the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. And future generations shall have in their hands the guide by which they shall know the sins of the 20th century. I know and I know you too believe in time, but we shall wait patiently for 200 years if need be to face our enemies through our posterity. When my enemies are satisfied, in life I shall come back, or in death even to serve you as I served before. In life I shall be the same, in death I shall be a terror to the Then count on me to be the real Marcus Garvey I would like to be. If I may come in an earthquake or a plague or a pestilence or as God would have me, then be assured that I shall never desert you and make your enemies triumph over you. Will I God not go to hell a million times for you? If I die in Atlanta, my work will only just then begin. For I shall live in a physical or a spiritual to see the day of Africa's glory. When I am dead, wrap the mantle of the red, the black and the green around me, for in the new life I shall rise up with God's prince and blessing to lead the millions of the heights and the triumph that you will know. Look for me in a world when I'm a storm. Look for me all around you, for with God's grace I shall come back with countless millions of black men and women who have died in America, those who have died in the West Indies, and those who have died in Africa, to aid you in the fight for liberty, freedom, and life.